Many, many years ago when I was a kid, my dad, who is actually in the congregation today, encouraged me to try the Boy Scouts at my local parish in Southwest Houston. Now being the fickle and stubborn kid that I was, I unfortunately didn't stay in it for too long. Uh, however, the motto of the Scouts, that is, be prepared, has always stuck with me. Now for the Scouts, be prepared means to always be in the state of readiness in mind and body to do your duty. Now for me, even to this day, I have taken this motto to mean that I must always be prepared for any scenario that may pop up in the midst of my day. Now this manifests itself in uh, a few ways in my life. For example, I am a chronic overpacker, so even just like a one-day trip, I'm carrying out suitcases and multiple bags, it's really bad. Um, but you know, I, I always have everything that I need, so you know, there's that too. Um, I also carry like a, a pocket stole, so a stole is the piece of cloth that the priest would wear around his shoulder during confessions or when he's giving out blessings. So I have a pocket-sized version of that. Uh, I carry around with me everywhere in case someone says, hey, Father Viet, can you have time to hear the confession, or can you bless me? I could bust that out really quickly. Uh, and also, you, you see me walking around with a backpack, and actually inside that backpack, I have an anointing kit. So if someone comes up to me and say, hey, can you pray for me, you know, for my surgery or, or whatnot, I could actually say, actually, I could do you one better. I could actually anoint you right now. You want to go for it. So, and uh, so it's, um, it's often good to be ready. Now, the rec this recommendation to always be prepared is reflected in both today's first reading and in the gospel. Both reminds us that we must be prepared for the sudden coming of Christ and his judgment. Now, Advent is only two weeks away, and Advent is a penitential season which helps us to prepare for the coming of Jesus Christ in three ways. First, his birth on Christmas. Second, his second coming at the end of the, of the age. And finally, his coming into our hearts in Holy Communion. Our readings today, therefore, are kind of a sneak peek or a preview or a foretaste of what we'll be encountering in Advent. The prophetic oracle of Daniel found in our first reading today contains the clearest description of the resurrection of the dead and everlasting life in the Old Testament. Originally intended to offer hope to the people of Israel who were suffering from great persecution from foreign powers, this passage continues to offer hope down through the ages to both Jews and Christians alike, especially during times of persecution. In this, we read that in a time of great distress, the archangel Michael comes down to take up the cause of the faithful Jews. And with his coming comes the judgment of both the living and the dead, as the faithful shall live forever and shine brightly like the stars in the skies, while the others are placed in a state of everlasting horror and disgrace. When we move to today's gospel, we see many parallels and similarities between the two readings. Again, we read that in a time of trial and tribulation, this time, however, the Son of Man will come in the clouds with great power and glory. He will then send his angels to all the corners of the earth and gather the faithful elect together. Again, we see this separation between those who are faithful and those who are not. This time, however, we see an important addition that we do not see in the first reading. We read that no one knows when the glorious coming of the Son of Man will take place. <coughs> Neither the angels in heaven nor the Son himself, but only the Father. And in the verse immediately following this, we are told to be watchful, be alert. Do, you do not know when the time will come. Excuse me. Okay. 
It is to this sudden coming of the Son of Man and our inability to know when it will happen that I want to focus a little bit more today. You see, for each and every one of us, Christ will, at some point, suddenly enter into our lives and encounter us. Whether it be during the end of the world tribulations or the tribulations that come with terminal illness at the end of our lives, we will all, in one way or another, suddenly encounter our Lord, Creator, and Judge, Jesus Christ. And this is inevitable. Like our readings today, with the sudden coming of Christ comes the judgment, the separation between those who he finds living in his grace and friendship and those who have rejected him through mortal sin. Because only God the Father knows the day and the hour in which this inevitable encounter will come in each of our lives, we therefore must be prepared and watchful and alert. <coughs> now, how do we do this? How do we prepare for the sudden coming of Christ in our lives? Now, simply put, it is through an active and living sacramental life that prepares us for our final unavoidable encounter with him. This means a healthy and frequent use of the sacrament of reconciliation. Now, in addition to the regularly scheduled uh, times for confessions here at St. Anthony, the upcoming penitential season of Advent will have with it many penance services that will be held at the various parishes here in the region, which, in which a lot of priests will gather together to hear lots of confessions. Now, living an active sacramental life also means the frequent reception of the Eucharist at Mass. Because after all, how better to prepare the sudden reception of Christ of our, in our lives than by receiving him in our bodies in the Eucharist as in a, uh, at a regular basis? Finally, living an active sacramental life in preparation for the coming of Christ also means seeking out a priest to receive the sacrament of anointing of the sick. Now, although this can be requested and re received by anyone who is ill or who is about to enter into surgery, it is especially important to seek a priest for anointing when the end of life is near. This sacrament can be requested, of course, through the parish uh, offices. But additionally, we will have at least one Sunday per month uh, here at St. Anthony's that includes anointing of the sick with it, within it, so that a lot of people not only can attend Mass, but can also receive the anointing of the sick. So keep your ears and open for the, those announcements. So my dear brothers and sisters, always be prepared for the sudden unexpected and final coming of Jesus Christ in our own lives, for we know not the day nor the hour that it will be. Stay prepared by living an active sacramental life through regular confession, frequent reception of the Eucharist, and receiving the anointing of the sick, especially at the end of our lives. May the true presence of Christ in the Eucharist in which we are about to receive today, help us to prepare for his inevitable, sudden coming into our own lives. St. Anthony of Padua, pray for us.